thank you. It's always a huge pleasure to come back to Ames. Uh, I've seen this place change uh, over the years, from the beginning when this was a derelict building in 2002, uh, which we were able to buy very cheaply because the whole area was very run down, uh, full of drugs and prostitution and slum landlords. And today you see this whole area is a pretty nice place. And actually Ames was the start of that. <laughs> um, and I hope that gives you some idea about uh, doing this in other places in Africa, that uh, centers of excellence for training and research can actually be a stimulus to uh, the development of many other things in Africa, whether it is improving schools or stimulating the, the startup of companies or raising standards uh, across society and consciousness of, uh, of uh, technology and science and what's going to happen in the future. Centers like this are extremely important for the regeneration of Africa. So uh, let me say just a little bit about the beginning of Ames. Uh, we were chatting over lunch, lunch. Uh, you know, what is Ames? Where did it come from? Uh, it is an extremely unusual institution. I'm sure you're all aware of that. It is not a normal university. It was started by people involved with universities and students, all the AIMS students come from universities, but AIMS is very different. Um, it's a small institution with very big ideas. It has ideas which are much bigger than most universities have. It has, it has very big idea. What is the idea? The idea is simply that there is a huge pool of talent in Africa uh, and the development of that talent is vital uh, both for Africa so that Africa takes off and joins the world as a leading continent and secondly it's vital for science. Uh, right now science is missing out on all these talented, motivated people coming from different cultures who can bring new ideas and new energy and new creativity to science. And for all of you, uh, you know the background you come from is unusual for a scientist. You know there are few people from your country or background who have really made it as leading scientists. Um, and. Uh, and so you bring something new. And I want to just say to you, take strength from your own uniqueness. Realize that is a source of strength. And I'll tell you my own story, just to indicate that. Um, I was born in South Africa, and my parents went to prison for fighting against apartheid, uh, both my mother and my father. And then we were refugees. Uh, we lived in Kenya and then Tanzania for three years. And life was tough. Uh, not as tough as for many of you, I'm sure, but it was tough. Uh, uh, my parents found it hard to find employment. Uh, we didn't know uh, what our future would be. And eventually we went to the UK and eventually I went to university, I went to Cambridge, and I came back to, uh, to Africa for a year and I taught in a as a volunteer teacher in a school in Lesotho. And there it really struck me. There are so many talented kids in the villages in Africa and they have no chance of doing anything beyond, in their case beyond going to the mines in South Africa and working underground in, in horrible conditions to dig out minerals and so on. If they were very lucky they might get an office job. Uh, that, was, that was the height of their hope the best thing they could hope for was to get a job in an office as a clerk. Okay? There was no chance for them to become an engineer or a scientist or a technologist. No chance in the world. So that really uh, made a huge impression on me. And, I, and this I'm sure you all know. There are brilliant, uh, interesting kids all over Africa who don't have this chance. And they're just wasted. And yet, how can we even speak about African development if we are not providing opportunities for young people 
to develop their minds. Because development is all about the mind. Okay, development is all in the mind. It's all a mindset. If you have a mindset that nothing can change, and things are terrible, but there's nothing that can be done, well, they'll remain the same. On the contrary, if your mindset is, no, I'm not going to accept that, uh, I am going to do what I can with my friends and persuading other people to change things uh, for the better, there's a huge amount you can do. So I'll tell you my story again. I was a professor, eventually made it as a professor in Cambridge in England. And I could have said, okay, I have my job, I'm happy as a professor, let me forget about all the problems in the world and just enjoy my, uh, my own research. But I didn't do that. Uh, partly because my parents told me, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> Don't forget where you came from. And partly because I really felt it in my heart. There's more to life than selfish career uh, development. There's much more to life than that. And so at some point, I decided to throw myself into this new, this idea of a pan-African center of excellence for training and research, which would show the world that the stereotypes about Africa are wrong. And instead of uh, writing off Africa as a lost cause, people should instead realize that if they switched on Africa, it would be a source of many wonderful things. Uh, we all know what Africa has done for music or for art. We all know that all human beings come from Africa. Okay? Africa was the origin of all of us. And, um, and we all know Africa is a wonderful continent with many uh, fantastic places and, 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 and wonderful people. People who come to Africa fall in love with it. Okay? That is always the case. Okay? Yet, somehow they cannot see that this place could be uh, a world-leading continent, and especially in science. So, uh, I decided to throw myself into this. Um, it's very hard work. If you have an idea and you just determine to make it reality, it's very, very hard work, even if it's a good idea. But the way to do it is you start making friends and you start realizing that the people you know and the people you can get to know can all help. And when you meet like-minded people and you all agree on a common cause, there's nothing that can stop you. And that's the spirit we started Ames, and it's still the spirit of Ames. The reason why this institution is so unique, it is self-made. Okay, Ames is a self-made institution. It is made by the teachers, it is made by the administrators, it's made by, above all, by the students, by the tutors, by the people who pass through. You are all responsible for this place. <laughs> okay? And I want you to feel that responsibility and to realize it's also an opportunity because Ames is probably the fastest growing institution in Africa. We have attracted support from all over. You see on the website, there's an article in Nature magazine. I don't know if you saw it two months ago. There is no other institution in Africa which attracts the interest which Ames attracts because people get it that our goal is very, very high. Our goal is to demonstrate that Africans can be leading scientists, technologists, innovators uh, for the world. And people are very excited about this idea, not just in Africa, but outside. So, uh, so this little place, which started off with no money and no institutional uh, backing and very little government backing, this place has emerged as something unique and very, very important for the future. So, I'll tell you some of the recent developments. You may know that the Canadian government uh, in 2010 <coughs> announced major support for the next Einstein initiative. Uh, and the Prime Minister of Canada said that this is a revolutionary approach to aid, which is investment in minds, in talent, in skills. Of course, this is totally obvious. Why weren't people doing this? <laughs> How can you support development and not 
support the development of highly skilled people. It makes no sense. But the world works like this. <laughs> okay? The world works like this, that good ideas are sitting there, unknown, and when these good ideas are revealed, people say, oh yeah, that's a great idea, let's do it. And I want each of you to keep thinking about this. What is the good idea you're going to have, about, which is going to change people's minds? It has to be persuasive, it has to be simple, it has to be very ambitious. And a good idea, in this case, changed the mind of the Prime Minister of Canada. And he said, yes, I want to see aid with impact. I want to invest in something where five years from now, I'm going to see the outcome. And of course, there's no bigger outcome when you invest in mines. Five years later, we're going to see all of you doing masters or PhDs and much more, I hope. <laughs> okay? Making discoveries, having ideas, uh, representing the future of Africa. Um, you, know, you will be the leaders of Africa's intellectual growth. And we all know that and we'll see the impact. So, uh, so this is what the Prime Minister was convinced by. Our second uh, great progress was just last year when the UK government decided to join. Uh, by the way, both of these Prime Ministers are conservative. These are not socialists, okay? These are people who believe in private enterprise and companies. But the agenda of developing minds is completely above politics. It's not of the left, it's not of the right, it's something everyone can agree on. We need highly skilled people, we need people with independent minds who have new ideas. This is necessary for society. It's completely obvious. That's why it's such a good idea. <laughs> okay? But it was also completely overlooked. So look at the Millennium Development Goals of the UN. It doesn't mention anything about education beyond primary school. Was that a good idea? No, I think it was a ridiculous idea. But that is what dominated the debate for uh, ever since the Millennium Devo Development Goals were created, uh, whatever, 10, 50, 15 years ago. So, um, so these two, uh, so, so the Prime Minister of the UK, uh, David Cameron, made a speech in Nigeria uh, last year, sorry, 2011, where he said, um, we must, uh, we must, we must uh, help the emergence of the next generation of business leaders, because he's conservative, business leaders, mathematicians, and scientists. Okay, he made that statement in, uh, when visiting Lagos in a speech at the Lagos Business School. And at that point, the UK government came on board with AIMS. We haven't announced the donation yet. It will be announced in the next few months. But the UK is supporting AIMS at an even higher level than Canada. Thirdly, Germany has just funded a chair at AIMS Senegal, where I was uh, the last two weeks. And I met the chair, he's a new, he's a young African scientist, he's in his mid-thirties. Uh, mid he's a uh, mathematician who works on partial differential equations and differ differential geometry. And he is the new uh, Humboldt chair at AIM Senegal. And uh, he's you know, a first-rate uh, scientist, the beginning of research operations at AIM Senegal. So Germany is on board. Our next target is the US. Okay, it's simply crazy that the U.S. with its Kenyan president. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> you see, the best things come from Africa. And the U.S. needed a good president, so Kenya provided one. Okay. <laughs> but, uh, and uh, with its Kenyan president, uh, the U.S. is ready to support AIMS, we believe. But of course, there's a huge forest of bureaucracy to try to get through to, to, uh, to make this happen. But we're working very hard, and I'm very hopeful that the US government will eventually uh, support, uh, support AIMS. So that's what we're doing on, in terms of winning international support. The reason we are able to do it is you, P 
people find you very interesting. Okay, I go to these people and I explain about the students and I show some examples of the students and people say, yeah, that's what we want to support. That's something really happening. Okay, so be proud because you are an incredible group. And I say this, I've only just met you, okay? <laughs> but, but I know your predecessors and I know the students in Senegal. I've just taught there for two weeks. Uh, it was my best ever teaching experience. Uh, they came to AIM Senegal, which was, is a very young institution, it's only a second year. Um, it's on the beach, like this one. Um, it's very different because uh, it's a much more rural uh, setting. It's near to a rural town, Mbour. Uh, it's in a nature reserve, so you have snakes. <laughs> you have to watch out for the snakes. You don't have them in Musenberg. You have other hazards in Musenberg, but no snakes. Um, and uh, it's an exciting place. And there's students there from Madagascar, and Egypt, Sudan, uh, Cameroon, Rwanda. There are 15 countries. And they're all interacting so beautifully and supporting each other. Um, and following everything in class very intensely and guiding the lecturer. See, because in my view, the lecturer, the students must not be passive in class. To sit there and just take notes is not to learn. Okay? If you're going to learn, you need to try out the ideas for yourself. And you need to guide the lecturer. When the lecturer is boring you, <laughs> okay, you need to say, <clears throat> Africa deserves better than that, <laughs> okay? It is time we all start to say that the only standard acceptable in Africa is the best. Nothing less will do. Why? Because we want Africa to lead and we believe it will lead. And so everybody's behavior has to be the best. Whether you're lecturing, whether you're learning, whether you are tutoring, whether you're helping your friend, whether you're setting an example of your own behavior, only the best will do. And I can guarantee you that if we're successful in promoting this culture of excellence within AIMS, and we already are very successful, we continue we will change the whole continent. That is how change happens, is people set an example, people see that it's a better example, and everybody will start to follow. That is how all major change happens in the world, and that's how AIMS is gonna change Africa. So there is AIMS Senegal. It's a spectacular place, much younger than here, so um, many problems remaining to be solved which have been solved here. Uh, I must say, everybody who walks into Ames feels the atmosphere, right? Within three seconds. You walk into it and say, this is not a normal university. <laughs> <laughs> There's something in the air, something alive, okay? Most universities you go in, you see a kind of corridor with offices and maybe it hasn't been painted and people are a bit down. And this is especially mathematics departments, <laughs> right? It's typical. Aims not like that. You walk in the front door, people are smiling, they're busy doing things, they have ideas. Why? It's because our aspirations are on a different level, right? We're aspiring. Time is too short for all of us. We all need more time. Why? Because we have so much to do and we're aiming very high. And there's that same spirit at Senegal, and I hope all of you at some point have some ch chance to visit there. And think about when you have your master's or your PhD, think about going to be a tutor in a place like Senegal or Ghana, which opened last August, okay? To give back. Because I can tell you in my experience that giving back is the most rewarding thing you can do with your life. It's much more rewarding. You need to build your career, of course you do. But if it's through giving back that you're a human being.
okay, rather than just an individual. So uh, Ghana opened in August, also very exciting. Uh, just moved in January to a spectacular location on the sea. We have three centers, all on the beach. <laughs> and that's good, you see, because Africa has so many beautiful places. We must find them, we must develop them, use them to show the world that Africa is a brilliant place. Uh, then there's some new news, which is just uh, uh, two months ago, or six weeks ago actually, uh, we got a letter from the uh, High Commissioner for Cameroon in Canada saying that on the instructions of his president he was writing to say uh, requesting that we establish Ames Cameroon. Okay? So they have committed one million dollars immediately. In fact it was quite interesting because we called uh, the, the High Commissioner called the President's office to say, uh, you know, I'm delighted to get this instruction. And the President's office didn't really understand. <laughs> they understood the million dollars, but they didn't really... <laughs> they, they didn't really know what it was for. <laughs> Mathematics, what the hell is that, you know? <laughs> Mathematical science, what's this all about? They didn't understand. So they said, ah, yes, uh, High Commissioner, yes, we, we got the instruction from the President. Uh, how do we transfer the money to Canada? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> the Cameroon government was willing to transfer the money to Canada. And uh, High Commissioner said, no, 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 don't transfer it to Canada. It's for Cameroon. It's to make a center for mathematical science in Cameroon. And uh, so, in, so next week, Barry, and myself and Thierry, Thierry Zomahun, he's the director of the Next Einstein Initiative. I, you must have met him. Have you met him? No? Some of you, maybe. So Thierry Zomahun uh, runs the Next Einstein Initiative. Um, and the three of us, we, the Next Einstein Initiative, you know about that? Yeah. Okay. So he's the executive director. The three of us will be going to Cameroon and meeting the Prime Minister and various ministers in the government and starting to investigate seriously the creation of Ames, Cameroon. And there will be many... Are any of you here from Cameroon? <laughs> yeah, just one. <laughs> yeah, usually there are more than one per year at, at Ames. There are several in uh, Senegal, probably some in Ghana. But uh, Cameroon has always been a source of many uh, very good students. And uh, so we're, we're very excited about this possibility. And, and where are we going from there? Uh, we'll see. Uh, we, once you get some momentum, you know, and, and governments start showing an example that they want an AIM Center, believe in AIMS, that it can succeed, other governments are going to follow. So I hope you all remain interested. I hope you all work hard, develop your commitment to uh, to Africa, your pride in Africa, your belief in the future. And, uh, and you know, you're very lucky because the, we plan the same alumni reunion. Uh, we hope. We still don't have the funding fully, but if we get it, we will have an alumni reunion in May, and I hope you'll all participate. And you will get to see, you know, we have nearly 500 alumni now. And some of them are, well, they're all doing well. Uh, some of them are doing amazing things. One works on the Large Hadron Collider in Switzerland. One works at National Institute of Health in the US. One works in Barclays Bank uh, in London in, their, in the top financial modeling group in the city of London. Okay? So, uh, and all of them are doing uh, very interesting things and many of them are now teaching and helping to build uh, maths and science in Africa, like, like, uh, which is our goal. So uh, I think by meeting all of these alumni, you will get a very strong sense of what is possible uh, for you uh, as individuals and collectively. So I'm asking for your support and your commitment that uh, AIMS is not a free ride. Uh, it may be free, but it's not really free. 
because there is a responsibility. There comes the, your time at Ames comes with a responsibility, and the responsibility is to give others the same chance you will get, and then together to change, change Africa for the better. So I'm very happy to take any questions, if any, anyone has any. There were hopes for Madagascar, but then there was a civil war, uh, which uh, unfortunately, I mean, the hopes were even quite advanced. There was a facility found, and, uh, but then there was this terrible civil war. And so for the moment, those are on hold. Uh, there were similar hopes in Ethiopia, but the main uh, advocate was the prime minister uh, who died. And then uh, there have been all kinds of complications. The ruling party is kind of split. And uh, so again, Ethiopia at the moment is, is unclear until uh, government issues get resolved. So unfortunately, Africa is at this moment of transition. There's still huge problems. I mean, Senegal and Ghana successfully held elections. They democratically elected new presidents. They had good, peaceful transitions. So many countries there are, there's real progress, and economic progress is everywhere. So I think this is exactly the right time to be doing AIMS, um, but it means you have to be flexible and respond to, uh, to developments. We're also hopeful of Tanzania at the moment. It is or it's already reaching them. It's already reaching them. Uh, the simplest way it is happening, and you see it everywhere, is that governments are beginning to appoint ministers who have uh, some technical training. And so there are many ministers being appointed with PhDs, uh, quite a few in mathematics. Why? Because people realize that um, the, the logical way of thinking you learn in science is actually very valuable. If you want to get things working, um, it, it's not general, but quite often mathematicians uh, have less, uh, let's say, ego uh, because they value knowledge and respect it and have a sense that there is something more important than us as individuals. And science, in general terms, brings humility, right? We're all humble before the truth. The truth is much more important than any of us, okay? And this is what you learn in science. There's a right way to do things, there's a wrong way to do things. If you don't have a scientific training, these things are not so clear, uh, often. Things are much more subjective and biased and so on. So I think governments are appreciating that a scientific background is, is an asset uh, in a minister. And say, take Rwanda. I mean, they actually have, I know there are many things they're probably doing wrong. I, it's hard to know. But they, the one thing they have done is invest in, in education uh, enormously and, and in uh, IT and internet connection and so on. Um, and so, uh, and the students coming out of Rwanda are, are much better prepared than even five years ago. Far better prepared. Um, and I think many of them are going to go back to jobs in Rwanda related to science, education, technology. Um, so, uh, so I think AIMS is already uh, well known. I mean, the Rwandan president wants an AIMS center in Rwanda. He's well aware of AIMS. Uh, we are a bit more cautious because we want to see some more stability in that area uh, and to be sure we're not entering a, you know, political problem. But um, uh, I, think, I think this is true of most countries. Nigeria too. Nigeria is an obvious place for an AIM center. Uh, it's the most populous country in Africa, right? So it's full of talented and uh, dynamic people absolutely full of them. Uh, I did meet the mayor of Lagos 
uh, in 2011. And we discussed AIMS and he was very keen to have an AIMS center. So I think once we have the capacity to, to do so, Nigeria will be a top, top priority. Yeah, uh, no, the, the funding AIMS has gotten is very diverse, more than any other academic institution. Okay, usually universities just go to government and say, we need the money, and that's it. Okay, AIMS is not like that. We had to raise every penny, and most of it did not come from government, and still does not come from government. So AIMS, uh, AIMS raises from local government, from international governments, from companies, uh, from private individuals. Uh, we have a very broad range of sources of funding. Uh, it's difficult to live that way, okay? Because there's more uncertainty. You have to keep persuading people. Uh, but in the end, you benefit because you, you have friends all over the place. You know, there's seven universities in Canada and I mention this because you're probably thinking about applications. Bear in mind there are seven partner universities to AIMS in Canada. Each one of them funds AIMS. Okay? University of Ottawa gives $50,000 per year to AIMS. They also waive the student application fee. If you apply to them from AIMS, you do not need to pay the application fee. Okay, this is not widely enough known. But I learned this in Senegal. All the students, one of them told me, oh, I just sent $100 okay, to University of Waterloo. You don't need to. They are a partner. Okay? So we're supported by wide rate, and we're building this all the time. We're employing uh, fundraisers. We're building a network of supporting partners. In fact, the interesting thing about the UK grant to AIMS, the grant will be, and this is still confidential, but the grant will be for about $28 million, okay? But with the condition that we raise the matching. So whatever we raise, they will match up to 28. So in total, it's 56. It's a lot of money, okay? But we want to do a lot of things, so <laughs> we need it. But we have to raise the private uh, matching contributions from private sector, from African governments. So the Cameroon government contribution will count as matching and, and so on. So that is, again, a very surprising thing that in aid, why didn't people do this before? You know, if you're giving money for African development, insist that the, gov Africa, the government matches or companies match. It's such an obvious thing because then you only pay 50% of what you would otherwise pay and you have a partner in the project who has a stake and you know wants to drive it but this is a, a new idea in aid to do aid this way uh, it's very surprising but as, as I say these good ideas they're all sitting there <laughs> not being used so find one and and run with it uh, and and the world can change I think the sky's the limit <laughs> Uh, I, I think the sky's the limit because I think we have a unique combination of many things. One is interdisciplinarity. You know, some people use that word and often it, it, it's used in a bullshit way. It's used to say we don't really do anything <laughs> because we do everything. Um, that's not what it is at AIMS. AIMS, as I see it, is about opening doors. That's the purpose of the institution. It's to take talented people in, like you, and just to open the doors as wide as we can. Okay? So that you choose what you want to do with your life and you have the maximum opportunity to do it. That's the whole purpose of AIMS. We're not about certificates or degrees or pieces of paper or you know, saying, I am qualified and you are not. Uh, not at all. Um, and so we're very different than most uh, academic institutions. And I think that difference in culture is very powerful. And if we can keep it going and keep the AIMS spirit going, 
this is what distinguishes us from everyone else and which will draw support and will bring the best students, the best lecturers, the best tutors uh, to work here. It's already working, but we need to keep pushing and getting further ahead. So I think, you know, to answer your question, where, where would I, where, what would make me happy? Honestly, what would be make me happy would see Ames DRC. <laughs> I, who, who is from DRC? You're from DRC. You know, we all know, we all know there are millions of super talented people from DRC, right? We all know that. It's obvious. It's always been obvious at Ames. Yet the country is in a mess, right? Chaos. What's, you know, what's going on? So what my, my deepest hope is that 10 years from now, the economy in Africa will grow, good governance will grow, there will be fair elections, we'll be able to open an M center in DRC, and, uh, and DRC will begin to be the country it should be. Uh, so that's my aspiration. So I think we all... Okay. <laughs>